These men and women did not sign up to do this job, to take this type of abuse. And I think as a department, as a justice system, as a society, we have to say that this will not be tolerated. Police Chief Teresa Thiege there speaking in court is a man accused of attacking a Cincinnati police officer faced a judge today. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kyle Linsky. I'm Paula Toady. It is a story we first told you about yesterday, live at 6, as details started emerging. Tonight, Local 12's David Winter introduces us to the man who's accused of luring officers with a phony call of a robbery. David, another really disturbing story here. Yeah, it certainly is, Kyle. 19 year old Jermichael Michael Williams is in jail right now. $1.1 million cash bail. He's now charged with, among other things, felonious assault, aggravated robbery and making a false alarm, all stemming from an incident Tuesday where police say he called 911 claiming to have been a robbery victim. When an officer showed up to his home in Price Hill, police say that he ambushed the officer, beating him and trying to take his sidearm, eventually saying that he wanted to kill police. Now, if this sounds familiar, it's because in July we told you about another officer who was severely beaten, allegedly by a man who was eventually deemed incompetent to stand trial because of mental illness. Cincinnati's chief of police showed up to this morning's hearing to tell the judge and the community she's had enough. Morning, Your Honor. First call on the court's docket is Jermichael Williams. As the 19-year-old stepped before the judge, his court-appointed attorney offered little defense. But Mr. Williams, I think I'm dealing with a, a mentally ill individual who had a psychotic event. I can't prove or disprove any of that information at this point. The attorney suggested his client may have been off his meds when he allegedly attacked the CPD officer Tuesday morning. That this will not be tolerated. Cincinnati Police Chief Teresa Fiji took the unusual move to speak at the defendant's initial appearance and then to the media, saying police getting attacked is not a police problem. The problem is, where is the family of the individuals with mental health? Where are the social service agencies that get our money to provide mental health services to these individuals? Our providers are out there every day. They're meeting with these families, they're meeting with these individuals, and um, doing doing the best they can. Linda Gallagher is vice president of Hamilton County's Mental Health and Recovery Services Board. Are there enough resources to handle the number of mental health individuals out there who are apparently not getting the services that they need? We have uh, experienced a lot of staffing shortages amongst our agencies. And if you don't have the workers, uh, they they can't get out there and meet the needs of the individuals. Gallagher says a very small percentage of the 35,000 people her agency services are under court-ordered medication, but when they are, law enforcement can act. In cases of individuals who are medication non-compliant, the sheriff deputies can go out and reach out to them and give them the option. Uh, we can take you to your agency and see your doctor for your medication, or we can take you to University Hospital uh, where they will give you your medication. But for a vast majority, medication is voluntary. For those people, Chief My Fiji wants solutions. Social agencies, step up. You get money from the citizens of Hamilton County, and we need you at the table to help these individuals get the mental health treatment that they need. I absolutely want to be sitting at that table with Chief Fiji, and I know our providers will be there too. Um, anything else that we can do to help prevent this, to uh, provide additional interventions in the community, we are very interested in. That VP at Hamilton County Mental Health Services was careful not to blame families when mentally ill people act out, but did say there are resources out there like the mental health hotline 988. She urges people to call it if they have family members who are off their meds and who may be inclined to get violent. She says perhaps her agency can do more public outreach to families. The American Psychological Association reports that fewer than 3% of people with mental illnesses have committed violent acts, but that number does jump to 10% when substance use disorder is involved as well. Kyle? David Winter leading us off tonight. David, thank you so much. And the last Cincinnati police officer to be killed in the line of duty was lured by someone who also made a false call. Officer Sonny Kim was shot on June 19, 2015. 
in Madisonville after a man called 911 to report someone with a gun and then waited to ambush him when he arrived there. Another officer shot and killed that gunman. You can always find our stories here on YouTube, but go ahead and click subscribe to get notifications and stay in the know.